The Premiers, Geelong, by the end of this, could possibly get Tanner Braun, pick 12 in 2020, Ollie Henry, pick 17 in 2020, Jack Bowes, pick 10 in 2016, and pick seven. That's four <laughs> first-rounders coming into a Premiership team that won by 80 points. Yeah, well, uh, that's what success does, really. Um, you, you have clubs oh, – sorry, you have players that want to come to you and mm. you know, part of good clubs and stability and, um, you know, we, we've seen it – it's happening at Richmond with uh, with Taranto going there and, and, and Hopper wanting to get there. So that's, what's, that's what success and good clubs – you know, they, they attract players. Do you think that the players are becoming more discerning than what they've ever been before? In what way, Tim? Of wanting to go to a successful club. You know, like once upon a time, we would sit there, at, you know, guys sat there at a club that was not successful at any stage during their career, yeah. but never entertained the idea of going anywhere. Now, I know the system's freer than what it was once, but yeah. do you think the younger players are now looking at some of the other players and thinking, gee, I wouldn't mind playing in front of massive crowds for Richmond. I wouldn't mind playing in front of massive crowds for Collingwood. You know, they look like they're yeah, on I the th- up th- success. Yeah, I think that comes in the equation. We, 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 if you don't have success, you know, for quite a period, and you're, you're, you're a battling team, sure, that, that comes in. But I think most clubs um, are able to keep their, their youngsters. I think what happens is sometimes the youngsters – of today, they they see you know the draft pool that they've come through, and they see players playing consistent football at other clubs, and they're not getting games, so they get impatient. Where yep. there's an expectation that they want to play in their first and second year, so that can come into the the equation a little bit. But generally. Um, I think players are loyal to their clubs and want to stay at their club. But if you look at, say, um, you know, Taranto and Hopper as two examples, yeah. and, you know, one of their former teammates, Jeremy Cameron, yeah. leaves GWS, he goes to Geelong, has success playing big crowds, that type of thing. I mean, it, it, it's, it's got to, you've got to start to entertain the idea as a player. Yeah, how much longer am I going to stay around here? And look what's on the other side of the yeah. fence. I mean, look how green the grass looks over yeah. there. Yeah, just, just on your example there, Tim, I, there's a little bit about I think the Giants have to get money out of their cap. So I would think, you know, those two players, if they had their way and, and, and everything was was um, tracking in the right direction there, they would want to stay at that football club. Um but having said that, they've got they've got a salary cap squeeze to the Giants, so that's why they've got to move players on. So, but sure, they would look at Jeremy Cameron, knowing that they've gone to he's gone to Geelong and and, he, and he's um, got success at that that particular football club. Yeah, so they they more likely to go to a, a club that's going to give them a chance. We all wanted to play in, in finals, mm. grand finals, so. I'm not too sure you're going to go to a, a bottom team, um, you know, but knowing that you can get to a club and still earn quite good money. Someone says, those players, that's true, Gary, about those players, but they're nothing special. Well, they might have said that about Tyson Stingle too when he lined, when he rolled into Geelong. Um, I think Ollie Henry can really play. Uh, I haven't seen enough of Tanner Bruin, but I know Cameron Ling's a massive fan of his having coached him at um, a school level, so... I think we'll just have to wait and see. Righto, Luke Jackson, Melbourne supporters want to know. Pick 13. <laughs> They're not taking that. <laughs> You've the, knocked it back already, pick, have you? Pick 13 and a future first and second is what's floated. I don't know what's going on. But then they've got Brody Grundy to come in as well. So talk us through how that's going to work. Yeah, well, I, I think yeah, I think the, the Melbourne Footy Club would like an early first round pick to start with. And that would be something in the top five or six plus another future first round or a, another pick maybe in the the high teens to get that deal done. But uh, what's concerning for, for Melbourne is you've got West Coast just lurking there. Mm. So they're going to have to get that deal done because they can't afford um, Jackson to walk because you'll probably get to West Coast if you went through the pre-season draft. So there will be a deal done there. What it's going to look like, I'm not too sure, but obviously there's going to be some work have to be done there. And Tim asked this question this morning. Was I surprised at the lack of or the level of acceptance for Collingwood fans who just sort of shrug and say, oh, well, Brody Grundy's going. Mm. Um, are you surprised? And B, what's, how's that going to get done? Oh. I see they've picked up 27, which yeah. is the um, Amon sup, uh, comp, um, you know, pick. So, what do you call it? Compensation, Compensation pick, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, well, I'm surprised Br- uh, Grundy's going because I think, you know, he's probably in the top two, three ruckman in the competition when he, he is fit. So... It is a big call for the for the um, for the pies. Having said that, when you look, is pick twenty seven going to get that done? I think word around the industry is that that's what they wanted. They wanted a, a second round pick. The, the reason why that pick is it's not a better pick is because they're obviously going to they need to get the money out. So 
once again, salary cap squeeze, mm. a little bit like the Trelaw situation. They're, um, you know, they need to get a player out to free up their salary cap. But having said that, when you balance it all up, what they're getting in, so they're bringing in McStay, they're bringing in Bobby Hill. It can wait. It can even yeah. itself out, even itself out. So at the end of the trade period, what Collingwood supporters want to have a look at is what's come in and what's gone out, and then judge it there. So uh, Melbourne, about, just on that, yeah. Twenty-seven seems light, right? I yeah. would have thought it's yeah. going to be. Light. But it then is. Melbourne turn around and go, well, okay, you keep him. How's that going to work with all the blokes? You well, bring exactly in? right. Exactly right. And Bobby Hill, what are they getting in Bobby Hill, Collingwood? Do you think? Oh, he's a he's got some speed. Yep. Um, he his work rate sort of fluctuates a little bit. Like he can tackle, uh, can kick a goal, can take a grab. So he's got something special. Um, yeah, he's still got a lot of development in him. But he's an exciting player. Is he in their best team next year? Do you think? I think at at his best. Yes. Yes. Okay. Daryl's in Queensland. Wants to chat the sausage guy, Daryl. Hey boys, how are we going? Good, thanks. Uh, yeah, with the Grundy situation, when we first heard it, we thought, oh no, it's going to be Trelaw and Steve all over again. But thinking about it, it's like a Lee Brown situation where Grundy can only play one role. McStay can cover a key back, key forward, second ruck like Lee Brown. And it'll suit our faster ball play, I believe. Yeah, uh, well, it, more more often than not, Grundy's playing in the ruck. So they've got some guys that can fill that, that ruck role. He hasn't played a lot forward, but it's going to be interesting even with Melbourne there where how they do the, the Gorn-Grundy um, mm. situation, who's going to play more forward, who's going to play more in the ruck. So, But, yeah, it, it's it's a good – it's it's – Look, it's, it's a game move by the Pies because at his best, he's a really, really good player. The other the other Ruckman they've got at Collingwood, you look at Cox and, and Cameron, um, you know, they, 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 they're they adequate players, but mm. they're not the top-end Ruckman. And I am told that Max Gorn is driving this as aggressive as anyone, the Brody grundy situation, right. which is making Brody feel very comfortable because, like I, like everyone, I'm wondering how it's going to work, you know, why would you do that? And Max has been the... Six-time All-Australian Ruckman, but um, he's the one that has put Brody's mind at rest about how it could work and uh, the role that he's prepared to play to make it work. So. You believe they've got some special plan in mind, though, don't you, about the way they're going to play these two? No, but I think that it does... To revolutionise the game. I think it opens the door to look at, you know, this non-traditional Ruck role. But um, uh, as I said, in the last 24 hours, I believe that Max is absolutely pushing as hard as anyone at that football club to get Brodie Grundy in. Is McStay, has he been recruited as a forward or def- a defender, do you think? I think both, and, and even a pinch hit in the ruck. So um, it, he gives them a little bit of flexibility, um, probably mainly forward, but he gives them some flexibility. Even if a, a Cameron, uh, sorry, a Darcy Moore goes down back, he can play down back at a pinch. So he's just a, a player that can play in a number of roles. No great surprise. This has been floated for a while, but Jeff Walsh has just been announced as the new footy manager of the St Kilda Football Club. Well, and um, You gonna, should try and get hold of him then. He's going to join us out of 8 o'clock. So um, that's good news. Super experience. How's Walshy been? Have you worked with him? or I was at Carlton when he was at Carlton years ago. So, um, yeah, I think he he left in 90, at the end of 94, the start of 95. So he, he missed that flag. Here we are yeah. in 2022. Yeah, and there you go. He's still rolling he's still around. as yeah. one of the most experienced footy <laughs> operators and uh, one of the friendliest too. That's but not always. Needs to the, be well, for us he has been, but not for all media. But uh, he's going to come in and join us at eight. So, for St Kilda fans, you have got one of the most experienced administrators in footy joining your football club. What's a fair deal off the temper text for Dunkley? How do you see that getting done? Um, early, early, so top ten um, first round pick. Just one. Yeah, just one. Just one. Yeah. Two for Toronto, one for Dunkley. Well, that's. Well, top 10, and you've got 12 and 19, but there's probably something more with the Toronto, the Hopper thing coming into play. Ooh, so, a little bit of... Yeah. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> what's, what, what is... <laughs> a little bit of... We'll, get, we'll give you overs for uh, overs for Terrans and, and you give us unders for Hopper. Is that well, top, you say? top 10 picks, are, you know, they're worth a bit more than the, the ones in the team. Is uh, the Acres deal the most under... Uh, is that the... Um, Best value deal going around? I don't know a lot about him. Um, Had a good I know, year. I know that you know, obviously he's a wingman and mm. running. Right, he's got a real big engine running power. So, um, 
Yeah, look, it's probably a good deal. Mm. Yeah. When you when you're looking at your wingman in the modern day football and you're getting the GPS numbers, what sort of numbers are you hoping that you see on their GPS? <laughs> It's well, a very specific uh, position, though, isn't it? No, well, I think, I mean, there's so many um, positions on the on the ground now that they're role players. You know those role players, yes. Tim? Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. Gary was a role player in his <laughs> Wait, no, one of the great swingmen. <laughs> well, well, you're both great swingmen, as a matter of fact. We swung on each other. Yeah, so the, it's interesting. I, I don't know. Like, it's the way the coaches want them to play and hold their hold their um, width and, you know, you can't go into this stoppage. And, look, it, it probably numbers-wise, I, I don't know whether it's about statistics or about, you know, kilometres run, but generally the ones that – the guys that play on a wing, you see what Lang, Langdon's done at, um, at Melbourne. Yep. They just run they, – they're running machines. They're from really goal square to goal square. He's a 14K man a game, I think, uh, on average. I saw an yep. old – Teammate of yours, an old premiership teammate of yours uh, recently too, David Glaskett. Yep. Would have been the perfect modern day yeah. man, wouldn't he? Yeah, for sure. He still looks really thick. Like he, does, he does. <laughs> um, sold out of the Giants. That's the other one off the temper text. Yeah, good uh, good move for the Giants because they need another Ruckman. Mm.